reflections. Hello and welcome to another time of study. Today we will reflect on the topic Are you being transformed? And our scripture is taken from Romans chapter 12 verses 1 and 2. I read from the NIV. Therefore I urge you brothers and sisters in view of God's mercy to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. Amen. The first 11 chapters of the book of Romans outline God's great plan of salvation established through his love and mercy. In view of God's mercy, Paul throws a humble invitation to believers to present themselves to God. He wants believers not to adapt to worldly standards, rather to be transformed by a consistent practice of renewing the mind. It is by doing so that we will know the will of God. Beloved, since you accepted the Lord, are you conforming or are you being transformed? This is food for thought, I guess. I would have us to review the passage we just read by answering the following. In view of God's mercy, what did Paul plead with the believers to do? You can find that in verse 1a. How are believers supposed to present themselves according to Paul? You can find that in verse 1b. What did Paul warn the believers about in relation to the pattern of this world? You can find that in verse 2a. What did Paul encourage believers to do in relation to the mind? Reference verse 2b. And finally, what will be the benefit of an ongoing process of transformation? Reference is verse 2c. There are some truths and of course lessons in the scripture above that are worth considering. And so, let's do a recap. Paul urges believers in view of God's mercy to offer their bodies to God. Paul said their bodies must be presented as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. Paul warns believers not to conform to the pattern of this world that is not to be molded or shaped by the world. Rather, Paul encourages believers to be transformed by the renewing of their minds. And finally, Paul concludes that they will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Wow! Mm. By application and response to the above, how can we be transformed into the image and likeness of Christ? Beloved, derived from the acronym CHANGE, here are some godly principles we can adapt. Let us see in the acronym CHANGE, we must commune with the Lord daily and develop intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Psalm chapter 5 verse 3, In the morning, O Lord, you will hear my voice. In the morning, I will prepare a prayer and a sacrifice for you and watch and wait for you to speak to my heart. Letter H. In the acronym CHANGE, we must humble ourselves and live holy lives reflecting the image of Christ. Philippians chapter 2 verses 5 and 6. I read, The attitude you should have is the one that Christ Jesus had. He always had the nature of God, 
but he did not think that by force he should try to remain equal with God. Mm. Letter A in the acronym change. We must allow ourselves to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. And Ephesians chapter 4 verse 23 has this to say, And be constantly renewed in the spirit of your mind, having a fresh mental and spiritual attitude. Hallelujah. Letter N. In the acronym change, we must nurture the seed of the word and let it bear fruit from a good and fertile soil, which is our hearts. Luke chapter 8 verse 15. But as for that seed in the good soil, these are the ones who have heard the word with a good and noble heart and hold on to it tightly and bear fruit with patience. Letter G in the acronym change. We must grow into maturity and let our lives be deeply rooted in him. Colossians chapter 2 verse 7. Let your roots grow down into him and let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught and you will overflow with thankfulness. And finally, letter E in the acronym CHANGE. We must embrace trials with a right attitude, knowing that they help our growth process. Romans chapter 5 verses 3 and 4. We can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance. And endurance develops strength of character. And character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. Amen. Remember, metamorphosis, which describes the process of transformation, is gradual. By constant prayer and study and application of the Word of God, our inner beauty will become evident. The Bible says, so all of us who have had the veil removed can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. And the Lord, who is the Spirit, makes us more and more like Him as we are changed into His glorious image. Child of God, the inner nature of a Christian must be Christ. Let us, like a butterfly, Change our form to be like Christ. Amen. What have we said? For us to be transformed to be like Christ, we must change. That is, commune with the Lord daily and develop intimacy with the Holy Spirit. Humble ourselves and live holy lives reflecting the image of Christ. We must allow ourselves to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Nurture the seed of the word and let it bear fruit from a good and fertile soil. Grow into maturity and let our lives be deeply rooted in him. And finally, embrace trials with the right attitude, knowing that they help our growth process. Amen. I have been blessed, truly blessed. I don't know about you. May I suggest that you prayerfully ponder over these verses again and make every effort to renew your mind daily with a decision to be like Christ. Shall we pray? Dear Holy Spirit, please help us to continually renew our minds so we can experience a change of heart and character that reflects the image of Christ our Lord and Savior. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God again. Friend, this is all that time would allow us to share today. And so, until I come your way again, remember, it's Siska wishing you Jesus. God richly bless you.